This is a Visio 2010 tutorial on connectors and connection points uh, in a previous video. And, uh, this one is uh, advanced first, so advanced number one. So the first thing we're going to cover here is the effect of uh, grouping. You'll note that in the uh, set up some objects here. We'll take them and just duplicating number of these together. Now, if we're going to set some connection points up on these shapes, that's going to make a big difference, uh, and, and we're going to group the shapes. It's going to make a big difference as to how we set it up. Uh, I'm going to start out by grouping. And if we go and just set a right now the uh, connect with all the, we're going to select the group and put a connection point, uh, let's say right here, and we'll take this object and copy it over here. Just hold down the control key and we'll put a connector between them. Now, if we go at this point and ungroup, what happens is the group was what had the connection point. So now we go and move this object, you'll see that it's not connected to the connector. Now, if on the other hand, we select this object, put a connection point on it, And then connect the connector to it, and then group this. Move this, and the connector stays with it. So now we can ungroup this. And the connector still stands with that object. So that's an important thing is to make sure that you don't put uh, connection points accidentally on objects that are grouped. Now, um, we've done the same thing here. And uh, one thing that you can do when you have something that is grouped like this is it's possible to go in and select individual objects within that group. So right now you can see that we've selected, even though these are grouped, an object within the group. And then we could put a uh, connection point right on here. If we select and group. Connected to it. You see, it can be. So this, this saves that connection point. So the uh, whole point here is when you're grouping uh, objects, be careful at the connection points. Um, the best place to put them is generally going to be on the objects, the smaller objects that are being grouped. Uh, one other point uh, we'd like to make here is that it's possible to connect objects uh, without any connection points at all. And that you can actually go for the whole object to the whole object you just sort of move your cursor into the center of the object so this looks the same as though um, the, uh, there was a connection point in the center of each one of these objects but it behaves quite a bit different when you start moving these around you can see that the connection point totally moved or the connection location and essentially this behaves as though the connector is connected to the very center of the object so that even if we go to uh, no fill at all that we don't see the connector going to the center so behavior and sometimes that behavior will uh, get a little strange looking like it looks as though it's not connected to the center but what's happened here is, is that this is right angle connector coming across down here and over to the center 
you know, those turns in the right angle connector are hidden inside the shape. So possible to connect objects without uh, establishing connection points, but it produces some pretty variable um, response. Now another point we'd like to, I'm um, hitting uh, control shift. Another thing we'd like to talk about is connection points. And so we we'll have establish an organic control key, this is the connection point. And you can select the connection point, uh, hit delete, and delete it. You can also um, hold down a control key, you can set a connection point, and then you can actually go and take the point and relocate it. So that's possible to move, and possible uh, to delete the connection points. Now, uh, once, uh, particularly if you have connection points set up within an object, or even even if they're along the edge, let's say that we go and um, set connection points on this object here and here. So we've got three connection points set up. And for right now, I'm just going to delete this other object. You can see that there are three connection points. Now, you can have an object that you put quite a bit of work into, and you've got your connection points all set up, and they're lined up consistently to space out wiring or something else. And um, an example here would be you can take this and copy the object. And I'm just going to rotate this one. And you can put some connectors in here between these connection points. And at this point, you realize that this shape needed to be bigger. Well, what will happen is if you go and just change the shape size, just drag it aside, you can see that what happens is the um, spacing between your connectors changes. It's proportional to the, to the size of the shape. Whatever uh, wiring arrangements you had made up and everything, that, that goes away. So it's possible, however, to um, change the size of the shape without actually moving the connection points. That's done by going to the uh, line tool and then taking the vertices and then you just sort of drag them over like that. And then the same thing here. So you can change the shape uh, using the line tool without moving the uh, connection points. Now, another thing that's useful for dealing with connection points is actually connecting objects as opposed to just lines. Now these uh, two objects both have connection points on them. But if we take this one and move it up here, there's no, no connection taking place. And that's because the connection points have um, different types. And if we uh, go select the connection point tool, and we highlight uh, or right click over this connection point to see there's an inward, outward, or inward and outward. And we, if we change this connection point, if we have an object that we want to connect to connection points, another object, we take this and change it to an outward. And now that will no longer attract a, a connector. However, we can now snap the object to another one. And if I grab this object and move it, now it's going to take that with it. So it's connected right to this. And then I could have a, uh, a connector, of course, connected to the object that's connected. And when we go and move this, it'll take it right along with it. So that's uh, another approach in terms of putting objects together. And in another video, we'll see uh, how that plays out. Finally, the last thing here is You notice that I was able to drag this away from that one once I selected the object, clicked on it. But uh, we have a couple of different types of connectors. Uh, I'm going to put a connector between these two. And you can change that connector's type. But right now it's a right angle connector. Uh, you can make it a straight connector. This kind of looks like 
uh, what you might see just connecting objects together, and it won't do any of those right angles. It'll just be a straight line between these. And we can also change this to a curved connector. Curved connector has some uh, interesting characteristics. We can uh, move the object in the curve. We're going to sort of follow along, as you can see. That's a pretty good looking curve. But we can select the curve and change its characteristics a bit if we want to. There's a point right here we can move. And if we need to do something a little more uh, exotic, we can add connection points. Do that, we go back to the there's a free form tool and hold down the control key. You can see we can add points here. And that will enable us to move things around. And then if we decide that there's uh, too many connection points and it's making it hard to get a good smooth line, we can also go in and select a connection point and delete. And you can select the connection point, adjustment point rather, and you can move it along the line. So there's a lot of flexibility there. So this is Curve Connector. So that's the uh, last point in this uh, particular video. In the next video, we'll be looking at uh, doing some things with these uh, uh, more advanced techniques. Go to drinfrastructure.com.